Good morning and welcome back to our Chronological Bible Reading. I'm Ray Reynolds, the minister of the Somerdale Church of Christ, and we are in 1 Kings chapter 21 today. I encourage you to grab a Bible and may want to get a notepad and some highlighters and pens to follow along and make notes as we study the Word of God together. The Bible says, And it came to pass after these things that Naboth the Jezreelite had a vineyard which was in Jezreel, next to the place of Ahab the king of Samaria. So Ahab spoke to Naboth, saying, Give me your vineyard, that I may have it for a vegetable garden, because it is near next to my house, and for it I'll give you a vineyard better than it, or if it seems good to you, I'll give you its worth in money. But Naboth said to Ahab, The Lord forbid that I should give the inheritance of my fathers to you. So Ahab went into his house sullen and displeased, because the word which Naboth the Jezreelite had spoken to him, for he had said, I will not give you the inheritance of my fathers. And he lay down in his bed and turned away his face and would eat no food. But Jezebel, his wife, came to him and said, Why is your spirit so sullen that you do not eat food? He said to her, Because I spoke to Naboth the Jezreelite and said to him, Give me your vineyard for money, or else if it pleases you, I'll give you another vineyard for it. And he answered, I will not give you my vineyard. Then Jezebel, his wife, said to him, You now exercise authority over Israel. Arise, eat food, and let your heart be cheerful, and I'll give you the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite. So she wrote letters to ah in Ahab's name, sealed them with his seal, and sent the letters to the elders and the nobles who were dwelling in the city with Naboth. She wrote it in letters, saying, Proclaim a fast, and seat Naboth with high honor among the people, and seat two men, scoundrels, before him, and bear witness against him, saying, You have blasphemed God and the king. Then take him out, and stone him, that he may die. So the men of the city, and the elders, and the nobles, who were inhabitants of the city, did as Jezebel had sent them, as it was written in the letters which she had sent him. Uh, they proclaimed a fast and seated Naboth with high honor among the people. And two men, scoundrels, came in and sat beside him. And scoundrels witnessed against him, against Naboth, in the presence of the people, saying, Naboth has blasphemed God and the king. And they took him outside the city and stoned him with stones so that he died. Then they sent to Jezreel, or Jezebel, saying, Naboth has been stoned and is dead. And it came to pass, when Jezebel heard that Naboth had been stoned and was dead, that Jezebel said to Ahab, Arise, take possession of the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite, which he has refused to give you for money, for Naboth is not alive, but dead. So it was when Ahab heard that Naboth was dead, that Ahab got up, Ahab got up went down to take possession of the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, saying, Arise, go down, and meet Ahab, king of Israel, who lives in Samaria. There he is in the vineyard of Naboth, where he has gone down to take possession of it. You shall speak to him, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Have you murdered and also taken possession? And you shall speak to him, saying, Thus says the Lord, In the place where dogs lick the blood of Naboth, dogs shall lick your blood, even yours. So Ahab said to Elijah, Have you found me, my, O oh, my enemy? And he answered, I have found you, because you've sold yourself to the evil in the sight of the Lord. Behold, I will bring calamity on you. I'll take away your posterity and cut off from Ahab every male in Israel, both bond and free. I'll make your house like the house of Jeroboam, the son of Nabat, and the house of Basha, the son of Ahijah, because of the provocation with which you've provoked me to anger and made Israel sin. And concerning Jezebel, the Lord also spoke, saying, The dog shall eat Jezebel by the wall of Jezreel. The dogs who will shall eat whoever belongs to Ahab and dies in the city, and the birds of the air shall eat whoever dies in the field. But there was no one like Ahab who sold himself to do wickedness in the sight of the Lord, because Jezebel his wife stirred him up, and he behaved very abominably in following idols, according to all that the Amorites had done, whom the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. So it was when Ahab heard those words, he tore his clothes and put on sackcloth on his body and fasted and lay in sackcloth, and went about mourning. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, saying, See how Ahab has humbled himself before me? Because he's humbled himself before me, I will not bring calamity in his days. In the days his son, I will bring calamity on his house. Now three years passed without war between Syria and Israel. Then it came to pass in the third year that Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, went down to visit the king of Israel. And the king of Israel said to his servants, Do you know that Ramoth and Gilead is ours, but we hesitate to take it out of the hand of the king of Syria? So he said to Jehoshaphat, Will you go with me and fight Ramoth Gilead? Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, I am as you are, my people your people, my horses is your horses. And also Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, Please inquire the Lord for me today. 
Then the king of Israel gathered the prophets together, about 400 men, and said to them, Shall I go to Ramoth Gilead to fight, or shall I refrain? So they said, Go up, for the Lord will deliver it into the hand of the king. And Jehoshaphat said, Is there not still a prophet of the Lord here that we may inquire of him? So the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, There is still one man, Micaiah, the son of Emah, who by whom we inquire of the Lord. But I hate him, because he doesn't prophesy good concerning me, but evil. Jehoshaphat said, Let not the king say such things. Then the king of Israel called an officer and said, Bring Micaiah the son of Amiah quickly. The king of Israel and Jehoshaphat king of Judah, having put on their robes, each sat on his throne, a threshing floor at the entrance at the gate of Samaria, and all the prophets prophesied before them. Now Zedekiah the son of Chenah had made horns of iron for himself and said, Thus says the Lord, With these you shall gore the Syrians until they're destroyed. And all the prophets prophesied, saying, Go up to Ramoth Gilead and prosper, for the Lord will deliver into the king's hand. Then the messenger who had gone to call Micaiah spoke to him, saying, Now listen, the words of the prophets with one accord encourage the king. Please let your word be like the word of one of them and speak encouragement. And Micaiah said, As the Lord lives, whatever the Lord says to me, that I will speak. Then he came to the king, and the king said to him, Micaiah, shall we go to war against Ramoth Gilead, or shall we refrain? And he answered him, Go and prosper, for the Lord will deliver it into the hand of the king. So the king said, How many times shall you make me swear that you tell me nothing but the truth in the name of the Lord? Then he said, I saw all Israel on the mountains as sheep having no shepherd. And, all, and the Lord said, These have no master. Let each return to his house in peace. And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell you that he would prophesy, not prophesy good concerning me, but evil? Then Micaiah said, Therefore hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne, all the host of heaven standing by, on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, Who will persuade Ahab to go up, that he may fall at Ramoth Gilead? So one spoke in this manner, and another spoke in this manner. Then a spirit came forward and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. The Lord said to him, In what way? So he said, I will go out in a lying spirit in the mouth of his prophets. And the Lord said, You shall persuade him, and also shall prevail. Go out and do so. Therefore, look, the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these prophets of yours, and the Lord has declared disaster against you. Now Zedekiah, the son of Chenanah, went out, went near and struck Micaiah on the cheek and said, Which way did the spirit from the Lord go from me to speak to you? And Micaiah said, Indeed, you shall see on that day when you go into an inner chamber to hide. So the king of Israel said to Micaiah, Take Micaiah and return him to Ammon, governor of the city, to Joash, the king's son, and say, Thus says the king, Put this fellow in prison and feed him bread of affliction and water of affliction until I come in peace. But Micaiah said, If you ever return in peace, the Lord has not spoken by me. And he said, Take heed, all you people. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, went up to Ramoth Gilead. The king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, I will disguise myself and go into battle. But you put on, put on your robes. So the king of Israel disguised himself and went into battle. Now the king of Syria had commanded the 32 captains of his chariots, saying, Fight with no one small or great, but only with the king of Israel. So it was when the captains of the chariots saw Jehoshaphat, they said, Surely it's the king of Israel. Therefore they turned aside to fight against him. And Jehoshaphat cried out. And it happened when the captains of the chariots saw that it was not the king of Israel, they turned back from pursuing him. Now a certain man drew a bow at random and struck the king of Israel between the joints of his armor. And he said to the driver of the chariot, Turn around, take me out of the battle, I'm wounded. The battle increased that day, and the king was propped up in his chariot, facing the Syrians, and died at evening. The blood ran out of the wound onto the floor of the chariot. Then as the sun was going down, a shout went out through the army, saying, Every man to his city and every man to his own country. So the king died and was brought to Samaria, and they buried the king in Samaria. Then someone washed the chariot in the pool in Samaria, and the dogs licked up the blood while the harlots bathed, according to the word of the Lord which he had spoken. Now the rest of the acts of Ahab, all that he did, the ivory house which he built, the cities he built, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Israel? So Ahab rested with his fathers, then Ahaziah his son reigned in his place. Jehoshaphat son of Asa became king over Judah in the fourth year of Ahab king of Israel. Jehoshaphat was 35 years old when he became king, and he reigned 25 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Azubah, the daughter of Shele, and he walked in the ways of his father Asa. He did not turn aside from them, doing what was right in the eyes of the Lord. 
Nevertheless, the high places were not taken away, for the people offered sacrifices and burnt incense on the high places. Also, Jehoshaphat made peace with the king of Israel. Now, the rest of the acts of Jehoshaphat, the might that he showed, and how he, was, he made war, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the king of Judah? And the rest perverted persons who remained in the days of his father Asa, he banished from the land. There was no king in Edom, only a deputy of the king. Jehoshaphat made merchant ships go to Ophir for gold, but they never sailed. And the ships were wrecked at Ezion Gaber. Then Azariah, the son of Ahab, said to Jehoshaphat, Let my servants go with your servants in the ships. But Jehoshaphat would not. And Jehoshaphat rested with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of David, his father. Then Jehoram, his son, reigned in his place. Ahaziah, the king of Ahab, became king over Israel and Samaria in the seventeenth year of Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, and reigned two years over Israel. He did what was evil in the sight of the Lord and walked in the way of his father and in the way of his mother and in the way of Jeroboam, the son of Nabat, who had made Israel sin. For he served Baal and worshipped him and provoked the Lord God of Israel to anger according to all his father had done. Really appreciate you joining us today for our Bible reading. We've now finished the book of 1 Kings. We'll see you again tomorrow as we study the book of 2 Kings. And until then, have a blessed day.